and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today we want to talk with you about five relatively inexpensive accessories that we have bought and have used tremendously. Well, one of them we just used once and we'll go on and talk about that one first. Um, and it is a trailer aid. And if your RV has a tandem axle, this is something you hope you never have to use, but you will be so thankful you have if you do need it. Yes. And when we were at the uh, South uh, Campground of Theodore Roosevelt National Park, when we pulled in there, we saw we had some real issues with uh, one of the tires on our RV and... It wasn't keeping air. Well, no, it had the... Uh, it was it had worn the oh, tread yes, was way yes, off and it had uh we ultimately found out that a belt had broken the tires were worn we knew that but we thought we would be able to make it home this was the end of that trip but we still had to get from north dakota to texas which is pretty much north to south <laughs> of the country and so um we were so thankful that we had the trailer aid uh, it was super simple. Uh, the particular ours was the um, front tire, so we had to back up on it. But the the second tire went in the little cradle. It gave us plenty of room to change out the tire. Didn't have to jack anything, uh, but the trailer aid worked perfectly. And uh, at the time we bought it, it was around fifty dollars, but. Once again, we hope we never have to use it again, but if we do, but we, we know. always carry it. Yeah, we I mean, know it's well worth it. Yes. And the second one. The second one we'll talk about is I think the next expensive in the, the list of expensive, and that is the scissor, the jacks that go between the tan. Once again, this is for tandem axles. Um a Two years ago now, I guess, we're getting close to when we were in uh, Provo, Utah. We stayed at Flight Park. Yes. And oh, yes. Awesome <laughs> place. It was an awesome place. Um, we could watch people hang gliding. And parasailing. Yes. Um, but when that wind shifted the evening <laughs> before we were leaving, uh, I took the dog out, and as I went out, the... I saw that the chalk, we just had the little yellow uh, triangle shaped chalks. I noticed that it wasn't under the tire anymore. And so I thought, well, it's because the wind has really been moving us around a little bit. And no, then <laughs> I thought, if it's moved the chalk, <laughs> I went up to the landing gear in front and uh, we have it on a four by four square yes. and then that was on a two by six and so the tongue of the RV was six inches off of the ground and um, <laughs> I looked and it was barely on I, it had been centered when we stopped but it was barely on that that block and so I just opened the door and told Marlene to get out because I didn't want her to be walking in the RV and suddenly it dropped six inches in front. Um, and so I should have just left her alone because she came out and tried to lift the RV. <laughs> but I just held it to be sure it was um, tight. Bottom line is we had some other wood blocks that I tried to stack up so that if it shifted, hopefully it would help support it. Uh, and then we hitched. Um, which was tough because the RV yes. was moving so much. That was, God just led us. Uh, but we were able to get it hitched, and I realized those little yellow chocks just really didn't do much when yeah. the wind was blowing like that. And so when we got home, uh, we got two of those uh, chocks that actually expand and kind of lock in on yes. the, between the tires. And we've been in some pretty stout winds yes. and it has really kept us pretty solid i mean we could tell the difference um using those and the next one was 
Oh, the next one's a really inexpensive one. It's the faucet split. And we get that for a couple of reasons. One is it allows us to use water to just turn a little latch thing while we while we're hooked up to the water and use water at the same time. Use water if we if we're connected to city water we then can be connected to city water for the RV, but also have access to water outside. But the main thing that I really like about this is then, and I'll show you this on our last little trip, I, I did this just so you could see, is uh, when I turn off the city water, I open both sides, and then whenever I unhook the uh, city water, the, the water hose, I'm able to drain all of the water out of that hose as I'm wrapping it up uh, and it just flows out the other side and it keeps the fresh water uh, hose very clean. Now, we get the cheapest ones because we've left some yes. of these. And and you can spend quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> we don't recommend We don't do that. that. We get the, you... the real cheap hose. Yeah. But we love having those and having them in, it, it really makes it, it makes it easy. Um, another that we have that's three is our levelers. For years, we, when we were in the fifth wheel, the whole time yes. we, we camped in the fifth wheel, we just carried uh, one, two, a one by six, a two by six, and um, then that's how we leveled. You know, we yes. would pull up on these yes. boards and it worked. And it was inexpensive, and that's what we had, and but we had a pickup, and that took up quite a little bit of room to be able to do that. So when we traded RVs, we went on, and there are different manufacturers and ones. We have our Camco. And last year... We have been exceptionally pleased with the Camco products we've gotten. Other people say Anderson's the best. They're free to say that. <laughs> but... Um, last year we, we reached the point that if we were on uh, asphalt they started to slip a yes. little bit because we would used them so much um, and all we did we made a little video about it is we just got the cheapest welcome mat at Walmart, at Walmart. <laughs> it was like three bucks cut it in half and then we just put half under each one of those yellow levelers and they st they're still they going strong yes. <laughs> and so those um, are well worth it. It yes, it really does help. It takes up so much less room, and we love it. And, and the last thing is, you know how when you're putting your uh, stabilizing, that's it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a long way to the ground. Well, what we've done is take some little blocks or about there there what we have used in the past there once again was wood but you want to do that because if that peg is just straight down it doesn't have yes. quite as much support as yes. if it has a little bit of an angle and so rather than carrying around all these blocks of wood we got their uh they're made for a bed to sit yes. on so they will support some weight the stabilizing things are really not designed to support the weight of the RV, but just to make it so when you're walking around, it doesn't shift as much. And these nest inside of each other, yes. take up very little room, and they're doing a great job. And that's one of the most recent ones that we've gotten. Yes. And I don't remember, I think it was like $12, maybe something like that at Walmart. And uh, we are really yes enjoying not having all that wood just roll yes. around in the back of the RV. That we have to put up. <laughs> what you get out. You, you gotta, gotta put up. up. But anyway, um, these are some of the accessories that we have um, gotten and used. And really enjoy, yeah, that we are getting a lot of use out of. And uh, like I said, I think the most expensive one was $50. Um, we have purchased these over time because when yeah. you're starting out if you're buying a tow vehicle a hitch and an rv you can't buy all of the well most people can't buy all <laughs> of the bells and whistles to go along with it but as you're looking at adding things 
you might want to consider some of these things and you might even be able to afford that faucet split <laughs> right off the bat anyway these are our ideas and if you have some accessories that you really like and use leave those in the comments so we can all learn thanks for watching two tired teachers